Well, you can at least say this. I think Rampage this week was a little bit better than last week. Not much better. Eh, it was a little bit better, at least. But at least one super incredible, memorable thing that happened on the show that made me get a big baby face pop, that's for sure. Now, if you're wondering about my thoughts on All Out on Sunday, I've already done a preview video for that show on this channel, and you should check that out. I want to go ahead and talk about Rampage this week, though. You start off the show with Malachi Black and Lee Johnson, and look, I understand Lee Johnson's part of the Nightmare Collective or whatever, the Night Fair family, whatever that stupid-ass Cody faction fuckstick name group is. But this match was dumb. And this is where I see that gulf and divestiture from the hardcore fans that value the matches and the moves above all else to those that look at this and say, we want different. Not everything should be the goddamn same. It's a perfect example of during the match, everybody's got to get their shit in. Nobody fucking gets over. The finish, I thought was great. I wish the finish would have been the whole concept of this. Malachi Black comes in, gets a chair, brings it in immediately, offers it to Lee Johnson to hit him. You have Lee Johnson show doubt. Lee Johnson doesn't pounce. Therefore, you make him an honorable, decent, respectable guy. Fans could get behind that. That's good. Malachi Black kicks the fucking shit out of this jobber, which is exactly right now what the hell he is. He doesn't need to be getting in a bunch of shit on a guy that allegedly is supposed to matter, even though he matters so much, you don't even have him on the fucking pay-per-view on Sunday. Like, just think about that. Is it a wasted time for 10, 15 minutes on a bunch of moves and bullshit where nobody's really getting over? You could have accomplished something for Lee Johnson, and you could have accomplished something for Malachi Black. Then still have Malachi Black beat down Lee Johnson and have Dustin Rhodes come out to make the save for his semi-annual I Matter Again promo and appearance. And that's cool. That would have worked really well. Especially if you'd have built the building for that match for the damn pay-per-view. But again, I will emphasize, for those of you that sit there and said, oh, AEW, this is such a big thing. AEW, they're going to do so great by him. Just a reminder... And WWE is not the only company that does stupid shit. I realize you're in a bit of an echo chamber when it comes to AEW because most of the online media certainly is in the tank for fucking Tony Khan and the EVPs and we know this to be true. Just admit it. Their bias blows through their balls on a consistent basis. So stupid, like Malachi Black coming was supposed to be a big deal, and it was such a big deal that the event that you're charging fans 50 bucks to watch on Sunday, I don't even see him booked in a match. That's stupid. Why do this angle? If you had done this angle right here to have Dustin come out to then challenge him and have it be like a last-minute addition to the card on Sunday, cool, that works. It would actually be pretty good. Not everything needs to be a long-ass match sometimes. God damn. But at least they followed this up with the Miro and Eddie Kingston segment. God damn. <laughs> Redeem. Redeem these nuts. <laughs> I know everybody's going to focus on that when it comes to Eddie Kingston. And more power to you. God bless you. How appropriate. But what got the big baby face pop for me was when Eddie Kingston was talking about... <laughs> <laughs> Miro's God. <laughs> yes, I know, Eddie Kingston. He sits there and Chris kisses his hunter fix sometimes. Blah, 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 blah. But it was awesome <laughs> to hear the crowd be behind him. And then they get like really awkward, like, wait, is he talking about God? Oh my God, are we, are, can we think for ourselves or do we have to be brainwashed sheeple and say, you can't talk about God, boo. <laughs> I wish he would have went even more. I wish he would have said something to the effect of, you talk about your God, Miro. Your God, let me guess. He's all powerful, he's all knowing, and he's all loving. So he knows 
yet either doesn't stop or chooses not to stop it. He's all loving, but lets bad shit happen anyways. And he's all powerful. And again, he could stop it and chooses not to. That is not somebody with qualities that you should be worshiping. Like, I wish he would win all in on that shit. I mean, if we're going to go get awkward and we're going to make people feel all types of ways, let's get nuts here. But I love this segment and this segment was effective to me. Because this segment got me excited for Miro and Eggy Kingston Sunday at All Out. That's what the shit on this show should be doing. That's what this did. I loved this. The handicap tag with Rebel and Jamie Hayter versus Chris Botchlander. Like, uh, I saw people, of course, predictably, because the standards are so low when it comes to wrestling, and it's not just an AEW thing. It's pretty much across the board now. If you do a move, no matter how sloppy it is, no matter how shitty it looks, no matter how choreographed it looks, no matter how botchy it is, it doesn't fucking matter. As long as you pull off the fucking move in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> People sitting there popping because of Botchlander's frickin' move. Like, it looked choreographed. It looked stupid. It looked like shit. Stop praising these types of moves. Stop rewarding this crap. I can't believe Chris Botchlander is even in the title picture to face Dr. B Britt Baker on Sunday. And the good thing about it, hopefully, is that she'll beat her and we can move the hell on. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm praying on everything that is the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley that Britt Baker makes it out unscathed and uninjured going against Chris Statlander. As every time she gets in the ring, I'm just fearful to damn near death that she's going to mess something up. Mess somebody up. She's an alien from the Andromeda Galaxy. Is she? You hardly see any character development with her. So what the fuck is that even supposed to mean? I'm just saying. Your main event, and again, I love the, the Mark Henry-led side-by-side -side live real-time interviews. Those have a really nice look, a really nice retro kind of mid-90s, early-90s WWF look to them. I like that. I really, really do, and I want them to keep continue to do those types of things. You know, not everything has to be brand new. Sometimes you repurpose something from the past and you make it your own, and it can really, really work well. What it does here, though, is establishes that there's a clear-cut main event here. It's a clear-cut big fight type of feel that they're trying to put into this. And I, I, I respect that a lot. You've got Darby Allen going up against Daniel Garcia with CM Punk sitting there on commentary. Let me say this for CM Punk. Apparently, the cult of personality means that you don't give a shit about your chances of contracting COVID. He's going to continue to jump into the Chicago crowd mass list like, that's a risk. That's a pretty damn big risk. I popped like crazy with the dude in the crowd fucking offered him the beer. <laughs> I get fucked this. It's the look of incredulousness on his face as the fan offered him a drink. He's like, what the fuck? No! <laughs> so that's a No! But jumping in unmasked into a crowd of unmasked people in this state and environment where you know if you test positive and AEW's on the up and up, that means you'll probably get pulled from the card on Sunday. That, that's a risk worth taking. But a beer is where you draw the fucking line, man. <laughs> I guess. Darby Allen versus Daniel Garcia was good. Nice main event, you know, match you throw in there for those that like this type of stuff. And that, that was all fine and good. Then post-match, Danny Garcia and his crew start beating down Darby Allen and Sting's getting the business. And, you know, you play it off where Punk's taking a minute or two before he really comes to the realization that he does want to go down there and help out. And he does. And he had one more face-to-face -face between CM Punk and Darby Allen, and that was okay. You know, you... you it feels a little weird, though, because you're trying to make it into a bigger fight feel than I think it really is. I'll say this for CM Punk and Darby Allen: This segment absolutely should have main-evented this show. Something involving CM Punk and Darby Allen. 
Do I think a Darby Allen should be wrestling two days before the pay-per-view? No, I really don't. I, I don't. Could I have some other type of segment, some other type of something? Um, I don't think you needed it for this. I do like the fact, though, that this was in the main event because these two should be associated with the main event because they should absolutely 1,000% be the main event of All Out. And I think somebody, I think it was Alex Khalil, had said on Twitter, you should follow him, especially if you geek out for AEW because he loves them no matter what. His spin that he puts on some of the stuff that they do is fantastic. Fuck a Dave Meltzer. Like, some of these fans, like Alex and many others, that defend this company and, you know, love this company and love what they do. Like, it's a goddamn shame that AEW doesn't put them on the payroll. Seriously. Like, they put some of these cats on the payroll and do some PR work for them. So I'm, just, I'm just saying. Because I guarantee you, quite a number of them, you put them on a podcast or you put them on camera, they're much more likely and much more well-equipped to be able to complete sentences in a decent amount of time, unlike Meltzer Magoo. Well, um, um, yeah, um, you know, um, yeah, well, um, yeah, mm, mm, mm. you been doing this for four decades and it takes you five minutes to spit out a sentence, Dave. Unbelievable. But, if you're talking about, well, if your Daniel Bryan comes back, and he comes out for the Kenny Omega, uh, Christian Cage world title match, and maybe that has to main event. You know, I don't even think I want to associate Daniel Bryan with that yet. Like, why make his intentions known right away if you don't have to? I'd rather have Daniel Bryan there at the beginning of the show or the middle of the show. This show is in Sunday, All Out, is in Chicago. It's about CM Punk. CM Punk needs to close the show, period. And nothing else is probably going to be able to follow it. Because that match is going to connect differently with fans. And the best thing I think about that match is hopefully it happens and then we get the fuck past it. So that way we can find out what CM Punk's point and purpose is. Because the, hey, happy to be back, that shit doesn't last long. CM Punk is better, much, much, much better when he has an edge to him. He has a chip on his shoulder, a stick up his ass, like... Something to be griping about or something to be going after. Something to be about. This nostalgia and happiness stuff, the warm fuzzies, only works for a little bit of time. And that, well, is quickly drying up. Time to do this and then move the hell on and find something else to do. And hopefully they do that Sunday after all out. Um, but at least I can say this was better than last week's Rampage. You know, while well, not perfect... That's okay. Not every show needs to be perfect. And at least, again, I can say it was only an hour, <laughs> so it wasn't so hard to get through. But um, it's really stupid to sit there and do all this stuff with Malachi Black just for him to, oh, he matters so much. He's such a big deal. He's not on the damn pay-per-view. How stupid. There is no defense. I want to be clear. We can have differences of opinions. We can have different perspectives, different viewpoints. Great. Makes it more fun that way. If everybody was always a fucking same, that would suck so hard. That would suck harder than Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez sucking off AEW. And let me tell you something, that's some Dyson Hoover type of bullshit right there. That's some hardcore sucking. You need difference. It's more fun that way. But we should all be pretty well aligned that as many of the fans have made a big deal about Malachi Black. Oh my God, Alistair Black is coming. Tommy Enns going to be there. Oh my God, he's there. And he's not even on the damn pay-per-view last I checked. You're using Rampage to build up to a freaking dynamite match between him and Dustin. Logical opponent. The execution of that piece was actually done pretty well. But he matters so much that he's not going to be on the show that you are charging $50 for fans to see. Yeah. Like I said, it's a reminder of it's not just Vince's company that always does the stupid stuff. There are others too. And that even goes for your beloved AEW.